Hi, this time I want to talk about dynamic objects. These are objects that can uh, follow other objects and connect them like hoses or pistons or any number of other things that, uh, that you can think to do with it. Cables that might attach from one end to another, uh, but we can still animate them and move them and they will follow uh, some other objects. So I've got a blank 3D Studio scene here. And what I'm talking about here, we're going to go to our Create tab, our Geometry button. Well, instead of the standard primitives, let's open up that drop-down menu, and let's find dynamic objects. We have springs and dampers here. The spring, we go ahead and click and drag, let go, drag again to decide the length of the spring, and then click once more to finish it. If I move to my Modify tab to adjust the pivots here, uh, or the, the settings here, uh, we can do some more with this. Uh, first of all, uh, we've got free spring or bound to an object. It's defaulted at free, which just means that we've created a spring that we can place anywhere we like in our scene. We'll come back to the bound object here once we've adjusted some of these other uh, settings. The first of which is diameter, which is how round or how far out you want this spring to go. If we want it to be fairly uh, compact, we can change that diameter to something smaller. If we want it to be thicker, we can change that diameter to something larger. Second is the number of turns, which is the more you have, the more windy it gets. The segments per turn, the higher this goes, the smoother your object. Only problem is, you know, things for like video games, the more polygons you have, the, the worse your machine or your, your console will perform. So we try to keep that as low as possible. Let's try 26. Looks pretty good. Other things, we can come down to the wire shape, and we've got a second diameter. Uh, the smaller we get means the thinner that the, the spring is. The fatter we get, the thicker. So if we try to find something right in the middle, let's say 2.5, uh, we're good to go. Again, this has sides as well. The more you have, the rounder, smoother your spring will get. The less you have, the more hexagonal or pointed it will get. Again, you know, something like this might work for a video game, whereas something like this would work more for an animated film or video. Uh, let's try 32, just to get it fairly round, just for fun, because we can for this time. The CCW or CW, counterclockwise or clockwise, just tells you which direction your spring is being wound in. Okay? So there's the basics. You can also do rectangular wires, or wires with uh, a round edge on one side but flat on the other, which we call a D section. Let's stick with the round wires for today. So there we go. We have ourselves a spring. Now let's talk about dynamics. Dynamics means the bound to object pivots. When you select this option, that makes it a dynamic object. This gives you two more buttons that uh, aren't available when you've got free spring marked. Choose the bound to object and you have a top object and a bottom object. We need another object in our scene in order to use this, however. So let's go back to our Create tab. We're still on the Geometry button, and let's get off the Dynamics and go back to Standard Primitives. I'm going to create a couple of spheres. I'm going to do this in my top viewport so that the spheres are standing straight up and down. I'm going to create a single sphere. Then I'm going to get my Move tool up here at the top. Hold down Shift and drag to create a copy of the sphere. We're going to mark Copy and just say OK. One of these spheres is going to be our top object, the other our bottom object. I'm just going to move them uh, kind of catty corner from each other, and then we'll see what happens when we select our spring and attach it to these objects here. So next, select your spring, move over to the Modify tab, and click the buttons. Pick Top Object. OK, once it's turned on, go ahead and click whichever one you want to be the top object. It should show it right here. Say, OK, Sphere 002, which is this guy right here. Pick Bottom Object and click the Bottom Object. It'll show it right there as well. Once you've clicked both, your spring will snap between them. Here's what's really cool. If I animate the sphere moving at all, the spring moves with it. So for machines, oh, really cool stuff happening right here. And you can actually animate these objects. Let's say if I want this one to do down to there, boing, and then back up straight, or something along those lines, I can animate my machine looking like it's working. 
very nicely, right? We've got something similar. Let's let's uh, select our spring. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. I'm going to leave my two objects here because we can use those again. Back to our Create tab. Change that drop down from standard primitives again to dynamic objects. And we've got another one here called the damper. This one's a little less cool, but we can make it more interesting uh, as we go. In my top view, I'm just going to click and drag out. I'm going to get this circular shape. Let go, drag out again, and click to final finalize it and create this shape here. What we have here is a damper, or you might know it as something more along the lines of a piston. Again, we've got the ability to do a free damper or bound to object pivots. I want to select the bound to object pivots. And right away, I can go ahead and pick my piston object, which would make our top sphere. Pick my base object, which will make our bottom sphere. Okay? Now, right off the bat, something happens here that's eh, not that great. Basically, no matter where I move this, it's going to follow between, just like our spring did. But this is a uh, piston object and then the base object, and these guys go in and out to... Uh, I don't know, maybe pump fluids or or do all kinds of, of strange things. And we can animate them in, in, over, out, in, over, out to do some really interesting stuff. Now that we've got these two shapes together, I'm going to pull them apart and we get this space and that's, that's very ugly. So we've got to make sure that we can adjust our settings for our damper uh, to make it look a little bit better. The settings, a lot like our spring, we've got a base. We can round that up to 15. We've got a height for the base which might push it out a little bit more. Uh, 20 looks okay. We've got a main diameter, which is the thickness of the fat guy. Let's go to 25. And we've got a height, which is the height of this guy. We can make him maybe stubbier. Let's go to also 25. Sides, rounder, smoother, or more uh, sharp-edged, uh, hexagonal, octagonal, uh, etc. Again, think about low poly for video games, high poly for movies. Then we have the ability to fillet uh, these guys. Uh, if we turn the fillet up and then add some segments, we can round this guy out and get a little bit more interesting uh, shape out of it. Let's try a fillet of five and six fillet segments. That seems to round that out quite nicely, right? The fillet number two with some segments would be the top one here. We can say, let's go only only a fillet of two there, uh, and maybe only we need only three in order to round out that shape. And that gives us some, some play there that we can uh, make some more interesting shapes there. The inside diameter uh, will you know increase it, and you'll have an actual opening to nothing, which is no opening. Uh, it makes more sense if something's entering this uh, opening to have a little bit of a space there. We'll go ahead and do eight. The piston parameters, if the diameter is 8 on the whole, the diameter of the piston itself needs to be something somewhat smaller. So let's do 7.5. The height, let's increase the height so that it looks like we've got uh, more to work with. And that way when I animate the sphere, in, over, out, in, over, out, we've got something that looks more like a uh, pounding machine arm piston type thing. Okay. We've also got uh, the ability to add what's called a boot. If we turn the enable on, uh, this adds kind of a hose shape to the piston, which looks like it's kind of a, you know, definitely a, a mad scientist chemical arm pumping uh, strange glowing radioactive fluids through a tube of some sort. And you can really have some fun creating some extra shapes there. Uh, once again, we've got all of the same things. Sides give you a little bit rounder. Uh, uh, if you increase those. Uh, the number of folds, which is how many of these kind of wild pump things we've got. Resolution, again, that you raise that, you're going to get smoother, but you're going to get a lot more polygons. So be careful, game designers. Uh, the stopper diameter, we can make that bigger. And now we've got all kinds of different ways to create a much more dynamic shape uh, that we can then, let's say, animate. Interesting ways. Let's move that over here. Start that there. We'll push in maybe only to about there. In, up, and then we can move it again to extend. And we've got all kinds of strange 
machinery workings happening here. I'm going to delete this damper. We've got one more object to talk about. Strangely enough, it is not under dynamic objects. Let's go back up to our standard primitives. And then right underneath the standard primitives is extended primitives, where you will find a hose. The hose works very much like a dynamic object, and I honestly think they should move it into the dynamic objects, but that's just my opinion. So in my top view, I'm going to click and drag to create the radius of the hose, let go, move my mouse out, and click again to end said hose. Much like our dynamic objects, we have the free hose or the bound to objects. I'm going to select bound to objects. We can pick our top object and our bottom object, and our hose will attach as best it can to those two objects. We can then increase how many segments if we want something a little smoother. Uh, we can tell the hose whether it should start smooth a little farther away from or a little closer to. Let's, let's move the starts and ends, uh, start at zero and ends at 100%. So we have that kind of corrugated look all the way through. We can increase the number of cycles to get a little bit more of a corrugated hose look. Try 28. And, of course, we can reduce that inner diameter or increase it to make it look a little bit more like what we might want it to appear as. Down here we've got some options. Our round hose, uh, the final diameter, we can make it a little thinner. Whoops. The rectangular hose, which just makes it kind of square, which is uh, kind of cool for uh, certain things. And the D section again, which is round on one side and flat on the back which, you know, that's up to your own creative uh, choices. I'm going to go with the round hose. We'll stay there. And uh, if we increase some, some size to maybe about 12, we'll get a, a rounder looking uh, result. Okay. Then we've got some tension controls up underneath our pick object buttons for this one. Uh, if I reduce the amount of tension, it's not going, it's just going to change the orientation of where the hose fits. So if I reduce it to zero, the hose is going to look more like an arm, uh, almost like our damper that we just made. If I increase that tension, let's say 50% on one side, uh, that hose is going to try and bend its neck a little bit more. If I increase it 50% on the other side, these two things are going to try. So if, let's say I've got a machine where one part's working the other part, but it needs to be connected with an air hose or something. We've got some air brakes on this machine. You can also use your rotate tool to rotate the orientation uh, into the correct place that you want. And then you've got your bendy straw uh, look and you can animate it so that things like hoses, cords, and cables will follow two different things on your machines. So let's hope that helps you out as well as you create some machinery and some other strange things that you might find uses for this for.